Hey besties, thank you for tuning in to a Vibe Called Blessed podcast where we turn up for Jesus and celebrate in our confidence. Thank you for listening. Hello besties. Listen, I know, I know. Where you, where have I been? Where have I been? Listen, I have been, life has been life in. <laughs> life has been life in, but it has been in a good way. And so I just took the time to just live in the moment of life and so i'm back though i'm back i promise i will not leave you guys without an episode for too long again <laughs> so welcome back to a vibe called blessed podcast i am your host jazz where this series is 30 something series and basically my personal audio diary that i am letting you guys in on i'm just sharing some experiences life lessons just place that I'm in with God at this present time in my life. So I wanted to talk about basically just that about actually living life and not me realizing the importance of it. And so many people say, yes, duh, living life is important, but you don't realize that there is a difference between actually living and really just going through the motions of life and just taking whatever happens, happens at that present time with no real intentions. And you may be like, what, who's, who's doing that? But you got to think about it. Um, I realized for myself, I, I always, it wasn't until I really, I got saved and I was continuing to, and I'm constantly building my relationship with God, but realizing that when it comes to, hmm, when it comes to life, right, I want to, obviously I want to have a purposeful life. I want to have a meaningful life. I want it to, everything that I do, one is to the glory of him and for me to be, to feel accomplished and proud of myself. And I didn't realize as I was coming into my, really coming into my identity of my, myself and my boundaries and who I am as, as a woman that, you know, there was things that I just wasn't doing in terms of, as in terms of living. I was, you know, going through motions, like obviously, you know, like a lot of people you work and I felt like I was, you know, you, you, what's the saying? Um, you don't want to work to live. You want, you want to, or work to live or live to work. One of them basically just saying your whole life is not going to be just revolved around working and, never enjoying life moments. Right. And I started to realize that, you know, I personally had a lot of ambitions and visions and things that I saw for myself, but because of circumstances around me, I, I don't, I guess you could say made excuses or did not fully engulf myself in doing things that brought me joy and excitement. And not that I didn't do certain things, but I'm talking about the things that is just not easily accessible. You know, like obviously the little things that you do to find joy, but I'm talking about in terms of like, um, for example, I have in the last year and a half have really enjoyed solo traveling. It is not that I don't have people to travel with. It is just for me, it's just a, it's a different type of feeling solo traveling that I didn't realize how much I would enjoy my own company. Like I knew I enjoy my own company, like if I'm home and I'm by myself, but it is a difference when you go out and it's just for personal self you know, just personal identity. And it's not that, um, it's not in terms of like being like, okay, if I have to travel people, you know, it, it is a lot. It can be, 
some downfalls with traveling with people, you know, in terms of like where you got to stay at and activities you want to do and figuring out times where you want to eat versus when it's just you, you know, you're in control of the schedule and it's all about you. But when I started solo traveling, it wasn't, it had nothing to do with anyone else, but all to do with myself. And it was like, I want to go to these places. So why is it that? And I always am trying to do these things with people and it's, and it's not that I don't want anyone with me, but it was like, sometimes, you know, you know how the terms is, is like, sometimes you just don't make it out the group chat. <laughs> and it was kind of like, if these are the things that I want to do, you know, to spare me trying to figure out if people have these days off and if they can do this and planning and all of that, why not just explore on my own? And I had a lot of anxiety. I can't even honestly remember the first solo trip I went on. I think it was just somewhere two hours away in another city. Um, I don't even know if I stayed a, a full night or maybe it was two days. I honestly cannot remember. Um, but I remember that first day, it was just I really didn't want to fully explore because I felt like <laughs> I'm by myself um, obviously have wisdom. If you are someone that solo, you want to solo travel, have wisdom and, and understanding of where you, where to stay at, um, you know, f- kind of try to familiarize yourself online, researching of like different places. And, um, if you're a part of travel groups on Facebook that just solo traveling of, you know, aware of areas to go to, not to go to, where to stay, not to say, you know, things like that um, in, in regards to your comfort zone. But I'm saying for me, it was kind of like, I really didn't want to explore too much because it was kind of like, you know, am I going to look weird? I'm like trying to go to this museum and I'm by myself and, you know, it's people going to be judging me. And it's, it's so funny is because when you think about it, if you were out in every day and you saw somebody just out by themselves, you wouldn't even think to even question, <laughs> you know, I, personally me, I'm minding my business. If you're, you're out doing your thing, I don't really, I'm not concerned about you. So it's like, why, why the thought that somebody would even be concerned about me? <laughs> it's like, like, they're probably just like, okay, you know, saw me and either I'm with someone or I'm not, you know? And so it was kind of like, if you're, consuming yourself being worried about (laughs) other things of course you're not going to do anything and so once I got over that hurdle um I was able to just be like all right I'm here for a reason (laughs) you know what I'm saying like I want to uh, reset renew my mind and enjoy myself and so why not um go out and explore and do things that I want to do or try a restaurant I wanted to try and um, I honestly I think I remember the first time my solo or maybe it was the second time I would not stay at the like I wouldn't stay sit I would um, if I had DoorDash I would place an order for it to pick up and then go pick it up and then eat (laughs) in the hotel um, or in the Airbnb I have stayed solo in Airbnbs and hotels but through my experiences of traveling by myself, I really started to realize a lot and identify a lot with myself that one, I love to travel. And I I always look at every opportunity as, okay, is there something that God wants me to experience or see? I look for God in every experience and everything that I do in every in my everyday life. And it started to, in these moments, be so appreciative of him because there's so many people that want to do certain things like traveling, whether it's locally, you know, um, and they don't do it um, because of various factors and, you know, they just don't feel like they'll be ever able to do that. And I just walk in so much gratitude that I'm able to experience this and, you know, and to be able to just take that time, you know, and some trips I have to, I plan it out so far ahead and I'm saving, you know what I'm saying, to ensure that I, you know, have spending money, gas money, you know, food to eat and 
um, just to enjoy my time because it's so necessary. We can become so consumed in life in general uh, of like you, like I was saying, like, you know, we, we, we're not, we're, we're meant to enjoy life. It's not to where we're just, I, even people that are so ambitious and I'm dry, um, their drive is success and they want to grow up on this ladder at, at, at some point they realize of like, you don't want to one day wake up. And you worked so much and you never enjoyed life. You never enjoyed moments, even if the, the simple things, because you're so consumed with with wealth. You know, of course, you want to build generational wealth. That's what I'm aiming to do. But I'm, it's not going to be to the point where time just slips away from me. And I'm like, all I did was work. And where where was the moments that I enjoyed in life? And, you know, it it's just it's just a, a a different viewpoint for me in terms of just living life and also you know there's a difference to just living um in truly allowing god to lead i'm at a point where i didn't realize that i had control issues but I think that just comes from just childhood trauma of feeling, seeing people around me and it seeming as though their life wasn't in control. And then, so, you know, wanting to be in control, not understanding as a child that there's other factors in play for certain situations and things to happen, why it did that. And so for me, it was all about trying to you know, I didn't realize I didn't know how to let go of certain things until letting go is all I, it was all the choice that I had after I exhausted of, of holding on to things for dear life is what I would describe it as. And God was like, yeah, you're holding on and you're trying to, to do this. And I didn't tell you to do it. And I mean, I can just be transparently honest about that, that that was, you know, it's very easy to say to let go and to let God, but until you, you, you don't realize in some areas, it really, it's not easy. And then you have to ask God to help you to figure out the root of it as to why it's so hard to let go and just give it to him. And I remember I had a point in time in my life where I, I knew if I did not let go, I was going to lose myself because I, you know, the saying that says (laughs) you want to, you want to make God laugh, right? You know, tell him your plans. And the thing is, there's nothing wrong with sharing a plan with God, right? Because what does the Bible says? The Bible teaches us to tell you to make make the vision, make it plain, you know, write it down. Clearly, you know, you have to have some form of plan. But but the thing is, when you have this plan, you have to, when you go before God with what you perceive is for you, right? You have to wait and listen for however long it is or look for the signs for him to say, yes or no to whatever it is that you are asking him for if if it's a go ahead nothing wrong with a t- trying to work the word or a prophecy but having the wisdom and going about it in the right way I think a lot of times we tell God our plan and we just automatically think that, you know, our plan is a good plan and we just try to move in it when maybe his way is maybe it's completely a no that's not meant for us or the timing is not or the way that we were going to do it is not the way that he would want it to happen. And we're not patient. And I, again, with life, life, and you, you, you realize that sometimes when you're trying to make something happen so much and things 
seem to be a challenge or, or seems like it's getting harder, you know, a reevaluation really does need to happen um, because you do realize when things fall through how it affects us emotionally. All of a sudden you can't think, you're sad and um, you're crying. You know, you don't know. All of a sudden it feels like you have no control or you have no understanding or no direction in your life. And, it, and it's like, no, it's not that. You know, once you told them what it was that you wanted in your heart, you know, we have to ha- trust and believe that God is going to answer us in in his timing in terms of what it is that we're doing. And, and there's a trusting that has to happen that he will reveal the plan to us. But we're just impatient people. You know, we want the answer. I pray about it. All right. I get 24 hours. I get 48 hours. You know, OK, a week is pushing it. Oh, it's a month. All right. I'm not seeing it. You know, did I miss something, you know, and, and not forgetting that our time is not, is different from God's time. And, and, you know, again, I'm learning that I am a planner and I had to learn that I was one of those people that didn't do well when a plan didn't work. And it was not an easy thing to come to reveal itself just because I didn't think that I was one of those type of people. But, you know, when the truth is revealed, when God shows you, it's you're like, oh, okay, wow. And I started to see how when a plan would fall through, how it affected me. That's why that's how I knew I'm like, I'm sitting here worried about this and that this And I'm missing, I've missed so many key moments because I'm trying to make it happen, but I don't know, but I never know where the answer is going to come from, if that makes sense. And so I had to make a decision. Most recently, I went on my most recent solo trip. I went to the beach and it just, man, when I tell you, I, this hotel, I, the location of it was so perfect I didn't even was aware of how perfect this this hotel was. I knew that where it was in proximity to getting to the beach. And that's really all that I cared about. But just where it was, being able to, it was near a, um, a river, a, a broad walk. And you can do a real walk and walk across it. And you see all of these boats and ships and and then walking distance of coffee shops and little small shops and just re- all kind of little things. And it just, there was a museum that was in the very next parking lot. Just then at that, it was just like, these are the moments of like, I'm away from home. I'm in a new environment. It is, the weather is beautiful. It Everyone around is It's friendly. Everyone is, you know, taking time off to relax and just and not stress and not worry and just enjoy moments of life. And it was just like when I tell you the trip was so last minute, I think I had decided to go on that trip two weeks prior to going had. And that's usually, again, not me. I am a planner. I plan months in advance. And for me to do that, it was like. I couldn't even believe it. (laughs) Very spontaneous. And I was like, I really, even the day before, I was like, I really didn't really think this trip all the way through, but it was kind of like, I'm doing it. (laughs) I'm going and I'm taking this time for myself. And it was so relaxing. I got to see the sunset um, by the water and it was so beautiful and I ate good food and I, I met some really cool people. I took a lot of pictures and I just enjoyed my company and enjoyed my time with God out there. And I was just like, this, this is life. You know, I want, like, you gotta understand that I, one day we are all going to die. We can't escape it. There's not a, a single person on this earth that has cheated death. And 
So what you do with your time while you're here matters. And I want, when I die, I want people to remember me as someone that not only loved God, but I lived. And they'd be like, you know what? She loved God and she lived life. And with loving God is part is where it comes with the obedience of sharing the gospel and sharing the love of Christ with other people and being open with people and loving people as Christ loved. And then also just, it's not even not taking life serious, but if there's something that I want to do, nothing is, nothing is impossible. We serve a God of the impossible. So there's nothing that's impossible. You notice that, that some people die and they just have a life and, and all that's left is just obviously memories. But then a lot of them die with so many regrets. Um, they wish that they didn't work so much. They wish they didn't live for people. They wish that they traveled more. They wish, they wish, they wish, they wish, they wish. And it's just like, I am afraid of that. I'm afraid to die and not have lived a purposeful, meaningful, enjoyable life. Does that mean I'm going to live in a utopia and everything is going to be great? No, because you obviously know one, when you're a follower of Christ, the enemy is lurking and he's coming for you (laughs) but and just things happen in life again you know you you lose people um you may move to a new place things transition in life that um can happen but at least I want to create memories and I want to have those moments and I remember it and I know it and you know me making the right choices and decisions and identifying finding myself and so really like really living life for myself and not for other people and it's it's so it's interesting because you 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 say you don't live life for other people, um. But when you have Christ and you you can't help but think about and and care about other people. But you know you also have to understand there's nothing wrong with being selfish and putting yourself first and taking care of you as well because it's so necessary and it's so needed. Well. I certainly appreciate you guys taking the time and listening to this episode. And don't forget to hit that replay, replay, replay and send this episode to someone else you may know that needs to hear this episode. And until the next episode of our 30 something series, bye bye.